What Every Child Should Know is brought to you as a public service by Nestle Foods, your Good Neighbor Information Center, and this supermarket. Albert Hay. You may know me as the man who wrote the music to How the Grinch Stole Christmas, or as the music teacher whom you meet on your TV set every week in a show called Fame. Today, I'm not here as a composer or an actor, but as a parent. My children are grown up now, but once they were young, like you. What I'm about to share with you is what parents have been telling their children for ages. We want you to know who you are, where you live, and what to do if a stranger talks to you. We don't want you to be frightened of all people. Some are good. In fact, probably most people are good, but some are not. We want you to know what to do and what to say if someone wants you to do something that you know in your heart is not the right thing to do. There are things that you should know that will help you as you grow, that will help you every step along the way. There are rules to follow now, and we'd like to show you how to make sure that you are safe both night and day. It's okay to say no to a stranger. It's okay to run away when you feel danger. Somebody asks, do you want a piece of candy? What do you say? Ah! That's the idea. What if a stranger says, do you want to go for a ride? Or tell you a secret? Or want you to see his puppy? Or whatever, what do you say? Ah! I think you're beginning to get the idea, and I'm proud of you. It's OK to say no to a stranger. It's OK to run away when you I'd like to talk to you about your ID. That's short for identity. And that word, identity, means who you are. Now, people know who you are because you tell them who you are. And it starts with your name. So, on the count of three, everybody shout your name. Ready? One, two, three. Wait a minute. Some of you called out one name, and some of you two, and somebody shouted three names. That's because we've all got a first and a last name, and some of us have middle names. So let's fill out the ID card that came with this program, starting with your name. Mom and Dad, or older brothers and sisters can help if you want. And to make it more fun, we've put together a little ID song. Follow along and learn all about your identity. Everyone should have an ID. I always carry mine with me. It goes from place to place, like the nose of my face. Everybody should have an ID. It starts off with your name. It's your name that is your fame. 
put it on your ID for everyone to see. Be ashamed if folks don't know your name. At the place that you call home, in case you ever choose to roam, put it on your ID for everyone to see. This is the place that I call home. I said, everyone should have an ID, and I always carry mine with me. It goes from place to place, like the nose of my face. Everybody should have an ID. The first line is your street. And that's the place where all your good friends be. Put it on your ID for everyone to see. My home is down on Easy Street. The next line is your town. That's where all your pals can be found. So put it on your ID for everyone to see. I think my town's the very best town around. Everybody should have an ID and I always carry mine with me It goes from place to place like the note on your face Everybody should have an ID Now it's time to fill in your state That's the place that makes you feel so great Put it on your ID for everyone to see It's fun to come from such a great state Now if you've got a telephone And it's got numbers that connect into your home. Well, put them on your ID for everyone to see. Now you always know how to call home. Everyone should have an ID, and I always carry mine with me. It goes from place to place, like the nose in my face. Everybody should have. Everybody should have. Everybody should have an ID. Do you remember the tale of Peter Rabbit? Peter was always getting into trouble when he didn't follow the rules that his parents taught him. The rules that Peter broke are the same rules that you should learn and follow. Let's take a look at some of the rules Peter broke. First, he went off all by himself. He wandered into a place where no one could see him. And when he sensed Danger. Instead of running to a place where others could see him, he ran to hide in a place where he could be caught. Now, how can we help Peter to learn his lesson? Peter is heading for a place where no one can watch him. His mother, his father, his sisters and brothers are not with him. What do we tell him? Stop, Peter. Don't go off on your own. Peter is in a place where no one can see him, and he feels danger. Go, Peter. Get back to your home. Peter is hiding instead of going to be with others. No, Peter, if you do roam, get to a group of people and tell them you need help. Tell them, my name is Peter Rabbit, and I live at 27 Cottontail Lane in Pleasant Woods. What else can we learn from the tales of Peter Rabbit? Do you remember when the Flopsy Bunnies fell asleep and were taken away from their parents? One of their neighbors kept on looking for them until they were found, and their parents kept on the trail until they were safely back home. Now what can we tell the Flopsy Bunnies to help them learn their lesson? The Flopsy Bunnies are taken to a strange place and do not know where they are. Call for help, Flopsy Bunnies. Make as much noise as you can to let others know where you are. The Flopsy Bunnies are frightened and are not sure what to do. Don't despair, Flopsy Bunnies. Your neighbors and friends and your mother and father will never stop until they find you. Of course, you understand, these stories about bunnies could be stories about children. These rules are the same. The lessons are the same. Don't go off by yourself. Don't go to those places your parents have forbidden. If you get lost, go to a group of adults or a policeman and tell them you need help. Don't be afraid to run if you feel danger. Don't hide. Go to a group of people. If someone takes you away from home, try to tell someone that you need help. Never give up thinking that those who love you will try to find you. 
They will never give up looking until you are found. to tell somebody what's inside you should never hide the way you feel from those who love you you've got to take each day in stride or we share those things inside with those who love you a secret let them go let them go there are those who want to hear so let go let them go mom and dad will take your hand those who love you understand all the caring and sharing are the pieces of the plan Everybody loves a secret. It's a special shared moment, a whispered surprise. A secret can make you smile. But sometimes a secret can hurt you, cause you pain, make you feel wrong inside. Let me tell you about good secrets and not so good secrets. The first secret is one that should be shared between you and your parents. It's a special secret word or name that you should never share with anybody else. Why do you need this secret word? Well, suppose someone tells you that your parents want to speak to you on the phone. If they speak the secret word, you can be sure it's them. Or, suppose you get lost or stolen. If you need to prove who you are, because young children change their looks very fast, grow up too quickly, as far as adults are concerned, as long as you remember that special word, you will always be able to let your parents know it's really you. That's a good secret to share. But if any adult you don't know tries to tell you a secret, or wants to touch you in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, or wants to take pictures of you that they don't want others to see, these are not good secrets. Tell them no. Like in the song that we learned earlier, just tell them no. No secrets with anyone but those you know very well, like mom and dad and brother and sister, or best friends. And if anyone wants you to do anything that makes you feel not good about yourself, don't keep it a secret from your parents. Don't keep it locked inside. Never, never hide those things from those who love you. You've got to take each day in stride. Always share those things inside with those who love you. Don't keep your fears a secret. Trusting, sharing. 
Hey, little bear, little bear, it's the phone. Mm, sure is. Noisy, isn't it? Well, aren't you going to answer it? Why? It didn't ask me anything. Hmm, I think it's time we had a lesson about the phone. Oh, good, good, good. What do I do? Well, first, little bear, you should understand that you should never use the phone as a toy. It's a very valuable communications vehicle. Vehicle? Huh. How many wheels does it have? Well, none. It's not that kind of a ve... Well, oh, never mind. Back to the lesson. First, we have a number for our phone. Do you know what it is? One. No, two. No, uh, how about three? Well, those are all right. Our phone number has seven numbers to remember. It's five, 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 one, two, three, four. Hmm. Five, 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 one, two, three, four. Good. Now when we go on an adventure in our Kit Kat Loon and travel to another town, I can call my goldfish to see how she is. Well, if we're in another town, you might need another number. You would have to call one five 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 one two three four. Oh, good, 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 good. Then when we travel to another state, I can call that number and talk to Spot, my cat. Hmm, another state. Well, that means another set of numbers. Uh, what state would you be in? The state of confusion. <laughs> if you keep adding all these numbers, I'm just a little bear, you know. Well, you see, each state has its own area code. That's three more numbers. And you have to know what the area code is for the state to call it. Ours is 401. Wait a minute. I'm going to write this down. Well, I think that's a good idea, little bear. Hey, kids, why don't you write down your telephone number, too? Right now. Have your folks teach it to you, then remember it, always. And you should learn that there are other important numbers, like your dad's or mom's work number, and your grandparents' telephone numbers, and even emergency numbers like the police and fire department. Learn how to use the phone today. It'll be your friend for life. Answer the phone, little bear. Bring, bring. <laughs> bring, bring. <laughs> I'd give up. Hello everybody, I'm here to say It's time you learn to use the phone today Just pick it up and learn to dial It can make you laugh, it can make you smile It's a telephone and I'm here to tell you all about it First thing you learn is the letter O It's the way to get help, that's what you should know Cause O's for the operator, that's the one Who can help you get the business done Just tell the operator that you're all alone and need help And this is important now You've got to know your address That's where you live The telephone, the telephone It can help you when you're all alone Know your numbers and learn how to call The telephone can help us all The telephone, the telephone It can help you when you're all alone Know your numbers and learn how to call The telephone can help us all Hello, how may I help you? It's time to review what we've learned. Then we'd like you to know why it's so important that you learn these lessons by heart. First, remember your ID, your identity. You need to know your whole name. First, middle, and last, your street, house or apartment number, town, and state. Secondly, learn how to use the telephone. It can help you in an emergency. Remember how to call the operator and to tell the operator who you are and your address. That's your ID. 
Some telephone systems have a special emergency number, 911. Ask your parents if you can call that number where you live. Next, and this is the most important lesson you'll ever learn. There are some people in this world who treat children very badly. They touch them in a way that makes them feel uncomfortable. It's not that touching is bad. There's no better feeling in the world than a good strong hug from mom or dad, or grandparents, or favorite aunts and uncles. But some people try to touch children all over their bodies. And unless it's your doctor or a nurse and your parents are with you, you have the right to say no to anyone trying to touch you that way. Say no and get away from any person you don't know well who makes you feel uncomfortable by touching you. And this is very important. If that has ever happened to you or is happening to you now, tell your parents. Let them know. Don't feel ashamed or be frightened to share with your parents anything that you feel is wrong. They love you. They will understand. There is one more very important lesson for you to learn. Even though most of the people you meet in life are good, honest people, there are some people who take children away from their homes, away from their families and loved ones. These people are young and old, men and women, black and white. There is no way of telling who they are by looking at them. But they do exist. And children are stolen from all areas of our country. From the cities to the most rural areas of America, children disappear. That is why we want you to learn never to wander away from your parents when you are in a public place. Never get into a car with a stranger. Never go with someone you don't know, even if they tell you that your parents are sick and they sent them to get you. There are too many missing children in America. Even one would be too many. But there are also many good people who have united together to find missing children. So there is hope. Hope that someday those who are lost will be found and returned to their families. That is the lesson you should always remember. Never give up hope. Even in the worst of times, those who love you will never give up looking for the missing children. Chevy truck driving by the little league field feels a tug down deep inside. It's a feeling he can't conceal. He remembers the way his boy could run, how he taught him to hit that ball. Seems like a thousand years ago. Dear God, he was so. Can't I have you back at home, back home? Uptown bus pressing his face to the glass. A frightened little kid looks out in the rain as the crowds all hurry past. Wonders if one of those hurried folks are his mommy or 
his dad It doesn't take a rainy day To make a missing child Feel sad Where are you now, my Can't I have you back at home, back home, 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 to stay? I miss you. Sometimes it's easy for you to think, who would listen to me? I'm only a kid. Well, if there's one thing you should remember from this program, it's this. Lots of people in this big, wide world care about you, little kid. They are working day and night to make sure the world you grow up in is a little better world than it was before. There are good people who are giving lots of time to help find the missing children and bring them home again. There are lots of good people who will listen to you if you tell them what's wrong. So open your mouth and say no if a stranger tries to pull something funny on you. And tell your mom and dad if you feel anything is happening to you that you don't like. And keep those eyes and ears open so you can tell if a situation is dangerous. Then put those feet into motion and go to a group of people and say, help me. Oh, and one more thing. We'd like you to sing along with this next song heard it before. Here it is. It's okay to say no to a stranger. It's okay to run away when you feel danger. If a stranger comes on strong and you feel somehow it's wrong, whatever they might say, just get away. It's okay. Somebody asks, do you want a piece of candy? What do you say? Ah! That's the idea. What if? A stranger says, do you want to go for a ride? Or tell you a secret? Or want you to see his puppy? Or whatever. What do you say? Ah! I think you're beginning to get the idea, and I'm proud of you. It's okay to say no to a stranger. It's okay to run away when you 